the morning and I'll feel scared because I know that um, the end of the system of things is coming. But um, but my situation has been um, it's been tumultuous because every every few weeks it's like my life keeps getting turned upside down and I can never stabilize. Right, right, right. And it's I very very difficult for you. So I'm scared of what's going to happen because I know that the conclusion of this system of things is continuing to. Um, I know that Jehovah's plan for this system of things is continuing regardless of what's going on to me, but because of my, um, health situation, I keep, I keep kind of being at the mercy of other people. Right, right. Can I ask you something? Yeah. Uh, do, you have, do you have access to the internet? I used to, but at the moment I don't because the only computer in the house belongs to my aunt Rhonda and she works on the internet. And so it's more of a work computer. And that's why I'm sorry that the reason I'm having to talk on the phone is because I can't talk in person and I don't really have any other resources at the moment. But the way I feel is that time is short and I don't know. I'm scared of what's going to happen to me and also what's going to happen to my mom. Right. Right. Well, that's, that's totally understandable. And, uh, and that's, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, what happened? Um, I, 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 would you like for somebody to stop by and talk to you, is it, or is that not possible? Yeah, I would like that at the moment. It's, I'm not saying that it's not possible, but at the moment, because my mom is very stressed because of the things that happened. But also, here's the bigger thing that happened. My mom is stressed because we lost our home in Kansas, yeah. but it wasn't our fault. But we... Um, we were renting, but then we got evicted because the house got sold. Right. And, um, and, but the other houses we looked at, they were too much money and they didn't have, they didn't have the wheelchair ramps. They didn't have the things that we needed because we're both disabled. Um, gotcha. anyway, that doesn't, it, um, the, the bigger problem that happened was I was studying with the person that assists me, Terry, except, um, people that my mom talked to convinced her that Jehovah's Witnesses is a cult. And after that happened, at first she thought it was good because I was studying the Bible. But then after that happened, my mom, who is nice all the time, she got very strict and said, because Jehovah's Witnesses are a cult that I can't have anything to do with it. And, um, I, at first I didn't know how to, it all happened really fast. I didn't know, um, I didn't know how to respond because I was outnumbered and she had people that came from the church of God for, of the firstborn and they came over to our house and they pressured me in, well, they pressured my mom and then my mom said, you don't understand what's going on, but Jehovah's Witnesses, it's a hoax and they, and they trick people. Um, what she said was that Jehovah's Witnesses always say that the end of the world is at any moment, but they keep stringing people along. And that, and that, that ever since 1914, they've kept saying that the end of the world is imminent, but it never, it never happens. Okay. And I... That's a, that's a, that's a common thought, yes, Okay. And she said that there's uh, people called the anointed. And um, she said that Jehovah's, the, because I told her the people at the Kingdom Hall are nice because I went there. And I said, they're, they're the super nicest people in the world. And Terry is like my best friend. And she said, Terry is nice, but he's not one of the anointed. And the anointed are this type of Jehovah's Witnesses that they're the leaders. And they keep... And they keep telling people that the end of the world is very soon, like maybe one or two years. But they've been saying that ever since the 1870s. And that they've always let people think that the end of the world is going to come. But then people live their entire lives and die. And all they ever did was work for the Watchtower company, but nothing ever happened. Okay. Well. But I don't. I'm. Uh... I'm, I only studied for two and a half months, so I don't, I, I, I didn't know what to say. And also I was outnumbered because the, there was these two people from the church of the firstborn of God that came over. I don't go to that church, but my mom did with Robert 
And they came over and they said that Jehovah's Witnesses led people to believe um, that in 1975, paradise was going to come. And so everyone got really excited and they sold their houses and they cashed in all their money they had so that they could go um, in the door-to-door -door preaching because they thought that in 1975 would be when Christ's millennial reign. But then after that, nothing happened and that people were homeless and then a lot of them got depressed. Okay. Is that a, is that a real thing? Um, yes and no. Um, you will never find anything written or ever said about 1975. That was a rumor that got started that, um, that spread like wildfire, but that is not something that ever legitimately happened. Um, but 1975 was a year that a lot of people believed that that might be the end of the system of things. Um, they were putting a date on it uh, that did not prove to be true. That was a personal decision, but you'll never find anything in writing or anything from the Watchtower organization that ever promoted that date. I didn't think so because I never heard of it until then and Terry studied with me and he never, I never heard of it. But the thing is, um, by the way, thanks for not getting mad at me. Um, the, the reason I'm asking is because they really, it, it didn't, it wasn't my thing, but they made a big issue out of it. They said that at, at district conventions of Jehovah's Witnesses, that um, the speakers kept saying, stay alive till 75. And no, that didn't happen. No. That didn't happen? No, that, okay. no, that, did, that didn't happen. No, see, that's, those are rumors that were promoted, uh, but that was not, that, that did not happen at all. And I, and I was in, and I have been in the truth my whole life. You, and I was around in 1975. Oh, you were? And none of that happened. Oh, yeah. What did happen? I, I mean, just between you and me, it's not like, it's not like a big thing for me. I just, like, what was the, I know that something happened because I asked Terry and he said, it's, he's like something, he said something happened, but it's all misunderstood. Just don't, I just wanted to know, like, where did it come from? And what was the big thing that happened? Well, that's the thing. There was a rumor that got started that promoted that, but it was not ever promoted by the Watchtower organization. It was never in any kind of publication that they that was printed by them, and um, that was just a that was just a rumor that got that got started that uh, you know it's just yeah. by wildfire, but that was not something that was ever was shown to the scriptures that well, was never printed in any kind of publication that wasn't promoted in any kind of convention. No, none of those things. So that there, nothing happened. There was nothing special about 1975 at all um i didn't think so here's what i wondered did satan start that rumor or or where did it come from more than likely i mean who knows there's a lot of people and he and you've met some of them who don't appreciate uh jehovah's organization they don't appreciate what uh we try to do with door to door ministry they don't like the fact yeah. that uh, everything that we teach is based on what is based on the scriptures. So they they do find no. I understand. No that to start rumors. Yes, I understand because the feeling I got from the people that came to our house was they didn't like Jehovah's Witnesses to begin with, and that's right. why I was hesitant. But the thing is, my mom totally bought into it, but I didn't necessarily believe everything that was being said. Because, um, well, just, can I, can I ask one more thing? Um, sure. and, by the way, thank you for not being offended because, uh, it's, it's not a personal, like, it's not my thing. Um, they, the people that came over, I can't even remember their names, but they said that, um, Jehovah's Witnesses used to say that the generation that saw the events of 1914 would by no means perish from the earth before all these things occur, but then, right. um, but then 
1994, after it had been like 80 years and everyone was starting to die, then they, they, um, they changed that and, they, and then a little while later they said, well, generation, um, it could mean anything. It doesn't necessarily mean uh, a lifetime. It just, and so they, they changed the, the meaning of the word generation to it, it used to mean one lifetime, but then they changed it to just say, "Well, it could mean anything." Okay, what? that is something that has been um, not changed, but a better understanding of it. That change didn't happen in '94. It actually happened in, I think, in 2001. Um, the I, the thinking is this: is that the generation of people that were of anointed that were in charge in 1914 and the anointed ones that are going to see the great tribulation start there's a those those group that group of people their lives would overlap oh okay before, before that before that first group passed away they would have lived their lives with the second group and the second group is will see the end of this system come and they are, so that is a period of time that they, it, a generation is not necessarily what we consider a generation, but in Bible terms, a generation is a period of time. It has a beginning, it has an end. And the definition of that generation is that those who were in power or were in the organization in 1914, their lives would overlap before they passed away with the second with the second half of the generation that would see the end of this system. Is there so, is there a scripture that I can write down for that? Um to show uh, my mom? A, but you would you would like to see a uh where it I mean was, uh, I mean the gener no I um the generation part, like where it overlaps. I'm not understanding your question, I'm sorry. Um, my mom is, I, I'm sorry to be a stickler, it's my mom that is making an issue out of it, and she's saying that that was made up by the, I, I hope I'm not offending you, she said that there's these bad Jehovah's Witnesses called the Anointed, and that they make things up, and that they're the ones who made up, the, they're, they're the ones that made up the generation thing and said, well, generation doesn't mean a generation, it means like two generations. That's right. It's actually correct. In, in the sense that it was a, uh, a generation that began, and then there's a generation that ends it, and they, their, eyes, their lives will overlap. And that, that she's not wrong in that. She, well, she said that the overlapping part, she said the overlapping part is what they made up. Okay, well, this is, is, this is based all on the scriptures, that are uh, in the Bible, and we base everything based on the Bible. So therefore, those that understanding of that term is something that would be proven through the scriptures. So you would have to research that. Um, and that's where studying the Bible helps. Yeah. Um, it's, you have to, you have to excuse me because I, I didn't, I didn't finish high school and also I only studied for two and a half months, so the questions that I asked, um, I hope they don't offend you, but the reason I asked is because our, my study got cut short because of the things that happened. Um, right. what, um, my mom knows more about the Bible than I do because she used to go to church, she grew up going to church and I didn't, and she said that in the Bible, it says that, um, in the future times, these people will come and say, I am the anointed, and that they'll say, that they'll say that Jesus' presence is here, and then they'll say, look, it's over here, look at these signs, and that they, they'll say, we are the anointed, but Jesus said, do not follow them. And right. I don't remember where it was, but she read that to me in the Bible, and I didn't know what to say back, because she said, that's what the bad Jehovah's Witnesses call themselves, is the anointed. Yes, but you got to understand, also, Jesus also said you will be able to determine which ones are true and which ones aren't by their actions. And then he lists those actions. So you got to look at those actions and see, based on that, who is following through with the 
with the actions that Jesus said would be that show true, the true anointed ones here on earth. And you're right. There are going to be false ones that, that promote certain things, but is it based on the Bible? Is it true? Is it the way, is it the way Jehovah meant it to be? Yeah, I understand that. You're absolutely, you're absolutely right. There are false prophets out there. There are, there are ones out there that call themselves anointed. And can are I, they, can I ask? Minds, are they promoting what the Bible says? So you have to look at their actions. Um, can I ask one question just between you and me? And I'm sorry if if you if it offends you, you don't have to answer. But um, the 1975 thing w- was some of the people that said that anointed. No. No, it it wasn't. No. Okay. So that the the reason I'm asking is because they made it seem like anointed people. They had a piece of paper that they said was cut out from Watchtower Magazine. I don't know if it was or not. And on, well, it was on the front of the folder. It said, why are you looking forward to 1975? And inside there was a chart that said that it showed Adam and Eve. And then it showed the list of things that happened. And then it said 6,000 years later. And then it said the Jubilee year. And then it said 1975. And they said it was the anointed people that said that 1975 would be a fitting year for Jesus' millennial reign to begin. Okay. Is, the, is, well, but I've never seen that, so I couldn't tell you. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't either. That. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to put you on the spot. The reason I'm asking is because my theory is that it's, that Satan is the one who created all this to distract from the preaching work. But I'm wondering, because they said that, um, they said that one of the governing body of the anointed witnesses got disfellowshipped. That's true. Is true. I'm sorry, this is all new to me. What, like, what is happening? I don't, um. That was back, that was back in the, um, between 19, 1914, between 1914 and 1918, there was, um, and some anointed that were not following through with the new enlightening information that they had learned and that they did not want to change. So therefore they started to promote things that weren't correct. And um, and eventually that was cleaned out of the congregation and they are not wrong, that actually did happen. But that was early, early on in the organization um, that those things took place. Um, was, um, when was the govern? when did the governing body first start? Uh, these are questions that I meant to ask Terry, but our study got cut short. When, when did the governing body get formed? The, the governing, the first governing body was, that took place in the early Christian, after Jesus died in the early Christian congregation, right around 50 BCE. That yeah. was the first governing body. The modern day governing body as we know it um, began approximately, well, that was in the early 1800s. Oh, yeah, sorry, I'm sorry, the late 1800s. You know, 1879, after, after they, 1879. They said that it happened in the 1960s is when the, is when the idea of the governing body came. Is... And they said before that that um, there was there was a guy called Pastor Russell, and um, then a, a man called Judge Russell, and that they there wasn't a governing body; it was just them writing books. They were the ones that were taking the lead in it, yes. Um, but they didn't do it alone. They had a group of anointed men that were. Uh, working together as a group. Okay. Um, I guess that's that's okay. It do, it doesn't matter to me. Um, I just needed to know to tell my mom that um, the nineteen seventy five rumor, the anointed people, it it the anointed people didn't have anything to do with it. No. Okay.
because of the things that happened. But also, here's the bigger thing that happened. My mom is stressed because we lost our home in Kansas, but it wasn't our fault. But we um, we were renting, but then we got evicted because the house got sold. Right. And um, but the other houses we looked at, they were too much money, and they didn't have they didn't have the wheelchair ramps. They didn't have the things that we needed because we're both disabled. Um, gotcha. Anyway, that doesn't, it, um, the, the bigger problem that happened was I was studying with the person that assists me, Terry, except, um, people that my mom talked to convinced her that Jehovah's Witnesses is a cult. Every, every few weeks, it's like my life keeps getting turned upside down and I can never stabilize. Right, right, right. And I, very, very difficult for you, so. I'm scared of what's going to happen. Because I know that the conclusion of this system of things is continuing to... Um, I know that Jehovah's plan for this system of things is continuing regardless of what's going on to me. But because of my um, health situation, I keep I keep kind of being at the mercy of other people. Right, right. Can I ask you something? Yeah. Uh, do, you have, do you have access to the internet? I used to, but at the moment I don't because... The only computer in the house belongs to my Aunt Rhonda, and she works on the Internet, and so it's more of a work computer. And that's why I'm sorry. that The reason I'm having to talk on the phone is because I can't talk in person, and I don't really have any other resources at the moment. But the way I feel is that time is short, and I don't know, I'm scared of what's going to happen to me and also what's going to happen to my mom. Right, right. Well, that's, that's totally understandable. And, uh, and that's, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, what happened? Um, I, 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 would you like for somebody to stop by and talk to you, is it, or is that not possible? It, I would like that at the moment. It's, I'm not saying that it's not possible, but at the moment, because my mom is very stressed, and after that happened, at first she thought it was good because I was studying the Bible, but then after that happened, my mom, who is nice all the time, she got very strict and said because Jehovah's Witnesses are a cult, that I can't have anything to do with it. And um, I, at first I didn't know how to, f it all happened really fast. I didn't know, um, I didn't know how to respond because I was outnumbered. And she had people that came from the Church of God for, of the Firstborn. And they came over to our house and they pressured me in, well, they pressured my mom and then my mom said, you don't understand what's going on, but Jehovah's Witnesses, it's a hope. You better hope and pray that you make it safe back to your own world. You better hope and pray that you'll wake one day in your own world. Cause when you sleep at night, they don't hear your cries in your own wake up early in the morning and I'll feel scared because I know that um, the end of the system of things is coming but um, but my situation has been um, it's been tumultuous because